throughout my career, any particular area I happen to be working on, I've developed online communities to try to tackle the questions uh, more collaboratively. Um, like back on uh, September 11th, 10 years ago, I, I set up a, a Yahoo group for people to debunk rumors that were flying around that day. Um, did similar projects related to uh, Hurricane Katrina and uh, the Boxing Day tsunami and, and Haiti more recently. Just trying to pull together people whose collective intelligence together could hopefully separate fact from fiction. Um, uh, I, I've never been trained as a reporter. Um, I, I don't work at NPR as a reporter. Technically, I'm, the, I'm on the business development side of the company, but it's always been a part of my job to experiment with uh, new tools to see how journalists can use them to strengthen the, the quality and diversity of their work. Uh, so I got on Twitter probably back in, let's see, February 2007, and I think the first time I tried anything like this was just by accident. It was in late 2007 when uh, Benazir Bhutto was killed in Pakistan. Uh, I was stranded at an airport over the holidays trying to get back to the D.C. area, and, and I saw on my phone uh, some tweets saying that there had been an assassination attempt. And, uh, I, so I started asking questions, and other people started asking questions, and it became this big discussion of people all around the world trying to figure out exactly what happened. Uh, I, I ended up applying some very similar techniques during the 2008 presidential election, uh, using Twitter to fact check candidates during um, debates and to uh, collect reports of uh, voting problems around the country. So, using tools collaborative, collaboratively has just been part of my work since the, the day I got out of grad school. Uh, it just seems like a natural thing to do because I simply don't have the answers to everything nor close to that. So might as well try to keep working with people to see what we can figure out together. And uh, in, the, in the case of the Arab Spring, I stumbled into it. This was not an assignment I was given by NPR. I was just, I've always been interested in the Middle East. Uh, in my previous job, I got to travel to Tunisia on a few occasions and got to know bloggers there. Also knew some bloggers in Egypt, and so when both of those protests started, I started seeing about it fairly early on Twitter. And so, just because of personal interest, I became I started retweeting them, and it grew and grew and grew and grew until the point where, at some point during the uh, Egyptian Revolution, I tweeted fourteen hundred times in one day. I think tweeted for twenty hours that particular day. And uh, about 50,000 tweets later, I'm still doing it. I've done it for every country that's had an uprising so far in the region. NPR has always been supportive of whatever I've wanted to do here. I was hired specifically to help NPR experiment with new ways of uh, conducting and producing journalism. And so um, I don't know how quickly it was people noticed that I was doing it. It would probably was until... It was probably near the very end of the Tunisian Revolution, right before President Ben Ali fled the country. About the time NPR started covering it, I, I had already been doing it for about, I don't know, 15, 20 days at that point. Um, and as the revolutions progressed, um, I just spent more of my, the, my uh, daytime, in my, my job hours working on it and uh, ignoring my other job duties. And no one here had a problem with it. Uh, as uh, one of uh, the leaders here at NPR, one of the executives told me, I don't totally understand what you're doing, but keep doing it. So uh, they've been really tremendous in that regard, that as long as I think I'm accomplishing something constructive, uh, they give me the space to work on it.